Let us begin uh, with our second talk for Circle today. I hope uh, there are still some viewers left uh, after uh, Artyom's hardcore presentation. And uh, now uh, we are going to have a much more lightweight one. So um, today I will be talking about uh, some uh, batteries that we at Circle have added to Servant and uh, we, we are presenting them for uh the public interest and open source but uh first of all a uh, couple of words on who i am uh i started uh, <clears throat> writing haskell commercially in uh, 2017 at circle uh, and uh, in uh, 2018 i moved to biocad uh, where uh, soon i've become a team lead for a full stack team of service uh, development but uh, i'm still uh, <clears throat> maintaining a good relations with Seracal and uh, I, we consider each other friends and that, that's why I'm presenting this talk today on behalf of my colleagues from Seracal. Uh, also, uh, I uh, have become uh, a, a member of uh, Servant maintainership team uh, since uh, autumn 2020 and also I maintain uh, OpenAPI 3 and Servant OpenAPI 3 packages uh, which provide uh, bindings uh, to uh, open API 3 specification and these packages were forked from uh, Swagger 2 packages which were available earlier. And uh, last but not important for today, I'm also a PhD student uh, of uh, theoretical programming languages in Poland. So, uh, uh, first of all, uh, I will give a quick tour of what Servant is. Uh, for those who are not uh, very familiar with it or maybe have forgotten some things and then we will move on to the main point of our today's presentation. So uh, Servant is a most popular web framework <coughs> uh, in Haskell that uh, you can use to write uh, backends for various uh, web applications like REST APIs or maybe you can just serve HTML or and so on. So uh, if I want to describe uh, Servant in uh, just one sentence, I would say that uh, it's a type level description of an API. And what do I mean by that? I mean that uh, to write anything in Servant, you first have to describe uh, the API of your application uh, in uh, terms of uh, Servant's type level combinators. Uh, for example, take a look at the uh, uh, sample uh, API. Uh, this uh, can correspond to something like bookstore or a library. Uh, and uh, here, uh, as a type level, as indicated by the type keyword, we are uh, describing what endpoints our API has. So in this example, it has three endpoints. And uh, what does Servant give us? Uh, Servant takes care of routing. So uh, we just specify uh, which uh, roads we have in our API we can construct, construct them from static uh, parts like strings, book, all, and so on. And also uh, branch on, on the road to specify a complex uh, path structure of our API. Servant also provides us with request parsing. So uh, for example, we want, just can specify that our endpoint will accept uh, some book, which is a Haskell type. Um, in a JSON format and a Servant will take care of all the rest. It will parse this JSON, convert it to Haskell values, throw correct errors if uh, the JSON is invalid and so on. And of course, uh, Servant also provides uh, a way to serialize your response. So uh, your uh, handler will uh, only have to uh, be concerned about producing the correct value and uh, Servant will uh, convert this value to uh, anything that your client uh, <clears throat> uh, expects. But uh, this is not everything that Servant gives you. It has uh, uh, quite a bit of uh, other integrations. Like for example, uh, you can generate uh, a client to access your API. This can be helpful if you are developing something like microservices or you are querying, querying uh, someone else's API. So you uh, provided with uh, a type level description of your API, you get functions to query this API and get uh, the re results correctly deserialized. And uh, also Servant Client works perfect, perfectly with GHCGS. 
So if you are writing uh, your front end in Haskell as well, using something like Reflex or any other GHTJS framework, you can uh, share uh, the type of API between your front end and back end code and use the same servant code to query your API and it just will uh, handle uh, all the rest for you. Uh, and also uh, there is a library for a servant which can generate uh, open API, both open API 2 and open i3 specifications on your, <laughs> on your API. So for example, if you are working, uh, working with a front-end developer uh, who needs to integrate with your API, you can just provide them with a generated open API specification and uh, you will be sure that it stays up to date just because it's generated from uh, the types of your API. Uh, and uh, just a quick showcase of how this uh, API corresponds to uh, some handlers. Uh, ah, yeah, okay, sorry. Uh, uh, you can uh, access uh, a, <clears throat> a good tutorial and a lot of uh, cookbook chapters on Servant by this link. And uh, now, uh, Here's a quick example, example of a handler for this API. So uh, provided with this type level description, Servant will expect us to write three handlers. And uh, you can see that uh, argument types and return types of these handlers are just plain Haskell data types. You don't have to worry uh, about serialization at all. And also uh, you may notice that uh, handler produces result in some uh, handler morning. Uh, but this is also customizable in Servant. You can use uh, any uh, monad you uh, want to use in your application. So if you want to use MTL approach or uh, anything like that, it's also possible. So what features does Servant currently provide? Well, uh, it can parse get parameters, uh, response uh, and request headers. It can parse uh, request and response bodies uh, with JSON serialization. Uh, uh, it can uh, document multiple possible respons responses of single endpoint. For example, if a single endpoint may generate a successful response with status code 200 and an error message with status code 400 or maybe 403, uh, something like that, uh, you can uh, document it at type level with servant and it also will be reflected in the corresponding uh, open API specification. Uh, you can uh, customize uh, error messages that servant produces. So for example, in, if in your company you have a style guide to what uh, error messages for invalid JSONs or like maybe 404 messages look like, you can customize it with servant. This is a recent addition um, in, in the last year. Uh, servant has basic <clears throat> support for streaming of large large responses. Uh, it also has support for parsing file upload uh, it has integration with quick check, so you can uh, describe and check some properties of your API and so on. But uh, this talk would not make any sense if there was nothing missing from Servant and in, indeed uh, there's a lot of stuff missing. For example, uh, it does not have a built-in way to integrate with any database. Uh, it does not provide any metrics like a Prometheus exporter. So you can just, uh, you can't just point your uh, company's Prometheus uh, or Grafana at uh, your application and get uh, useful metrics. It does not provide any semantic tracing and logging of the requests. Uh, it does not uh, have built-in combinators for sorting and filtering for all that return a list of responses. It does not have anything for pagination and so on. So given that there are a lot of uh, missing parts in Servant, uh, many uh, Haskell companies that, that write web publications uh, uh, used to uh, produce their own uh, libraries of uh, combinators that are used privately at that company. Uh, I'm aware of at least three such places that they have own, own Servant, Servant extras. Uh, and um, of course, these uh, extras are not compatible between these companies. <clears throat> the knowledge does not get shared and so on. Uh, that's why at Circle, when uh, faced with a task to write uh, a web server uh, for uh, one of our projects, we uh, uh, 
needed to re-implement the exact same uh, things that uh, other companies did, but did not share. But we decided that we would share our uh, work. And uh, that's how the Servant Util package was born. Uh, currently, it's only on, uh, on GitHub. Uh, you can see the link uh, on the slide. And the slides will be available later, of course. Uh, but uh, in the uh, nearest future, I hope it will be available on the package as well. So, and the rest of the talk is a quick uh, tour of this library, what it can do. Um, so I will be showcasing some examples of what you can achieve with this library. And uh, I, hope it, uh, that I hope that you will find it useful for your own applications and we'll give it a try. Um, so regarding questions, uh, you can ask questions in a Zoom chat and uh, my colleagues at Circle uh, who are also working on this library will try to answer them. And if there are some uh, unanswered uh, questions left by the end of the talk, I will, uh, will answer them myself. So let's start our tour of the Servant Util library. Uh, to uh, showcase it, I will uh, work on, this, on a simple example. So suppose you are working uh, on some application uh, uh, where in, your, in the browser, uh, in your UI, uh, you want to display a table of some uh, items. I don't know, it can be you know, goods in a shop, books in a library, uh, um, uh, films in a database, and so on. And uh, this UI are uh, pretty common. They usually have a way to sort on some columns uh, uh, indicated by tri triangles in my uh, drawing. Uh, they also usually have a search field where you can, uh, for example, search for a specific um, a specific item in the list. And uh, also these UIs uh, usually uh, have some pagination controls if the list can get large. So, but uh, to display this data, your front-end application living in browser must get this data from somewhere. And of course, it will get it from our backend written in Haskell with servant. But backend does not magically have this data already. So uh, it will have to go to a database to get this data. So uh, this is a well-known structure of any web application uh, out there. So uh, uh, let's move on. But uh, the actual sorting, filtering, and pagination of the data must happen somewhere. And uh, of course, for us backend developers, uh, the easiest uh, solution would be to say to our fellow front-end colleague, well, uh, just do it on your side. Uh, we will uh, send you an every uh, item of our data and uh, we will also fetch every item of our data from the database and our front-end colleague will just uh, do any processing uh, they want on the front-end. Of course, uh, this is the easiest approach and also the most wrong one because uh, there is a lot of data transfer both between backend and database and between backend and uh, the UI. So uh, a more proper solution would be to uh, filter uh, not in the browser. So we can filter in uh, the backend and send only a subset of data to the UI. But it will also it will still uh, have to fetch every item of the data available from the database, and uh, this is a great uh, burden on both the network between backend and database and on the back backend code itself. So uh, the most most proper solution in 99% of cases would be to filter and sort uh, using database built-in features. Uh, then uh, our UI only gets a subset of data and our backend also gets a subset of data. But uh, remember that uh, uh, it is the user who controls uh, what actual filtering and sourcing to perform. And to uh, tell our database uh, what to do, we need to somehow get our criteria uh, for filtering and sorting from the user. So. Uh, uh, and uh, also we need uh, two ways to communicate this data. First from UI to the backend and from backend to the database. And the second part is easy because uh, most databases, uh, most query language for the databases like SQL have clauses like where and order by and so on, uh, which uh, tell uh, the database uh, what filtering and sorting to perform. But 
there is not uh, a standardized protocol to do it between UI and the backend. So, um, uh, uh, unfortunately, every web developer out there faced with this problem has to invent their own uh, combinators for uh, for this problem, their own uh, language of uh, queries. Uh, to uh, do it for our project at uh, Circle, we have looked at uh, some commonly used patterns of uh, uh, API for querying and sourcing, uh, filtering and sourcing in, uh, in the world. And we've built uh, our library to support uh, these uh, most commonly used patterns and look like uh, some of the API we've met in the world. So, Suppose that uh, our API has this book type, uh, which has three fields, uh, ISBN number, uh, book name, and its author. Uh, and uh, we have a, a simple road, which gets all the books from the service. So it's a road which uses get method. It returns a list of books serialized as a JSON. Uh, and basically, we would like to extend this road uh, with some get parameters to specify what to filter and sort on. Uh, what are uh, the requirements? What we want to be able to sort on? Uh, for example, let's say we want uh, our books to be sorted by ISBN by default, ISBN ascending, and we also want to give the user ability to sort on any other field they, field they want. So, uh, servant util provides a combinator called sorting params uh, just for this task. And this combinator accepts uh, two type level lists, uh, type level because we want to document everything at the type level. And uh, the first list uh, is a list of uh, fields the user can sort on. Like in this example, uh, we say that the user can sort on ISBN name and author. And the second list is a, uh, is a list of things that uh, are sorted on by default. Uh, now uh, let's look uh, at the queries uh, which uh, this combinator can accept. Uh, it can accept just plain requests to get everything and no sorting uh, will be applied. Uh, we can ask uh, to sort by name ascending uh, here uh, we are using the uh, sort by get parameter and uh, it accepts things like uh, order and a field in uh, parentheses. And in this example, we are asking to sort by name field ascending. And what happens if uh, there are two books with the same name, then uh, they will be sorted by a default way. In our case, uh, we said that by default, we want sorting by ISBN. So basically uh, if you specify default sorting, uh, then uh, uh, whatever the query is, uh, the order will be some deterministic uh, order and not some random stuff that our database returns. We also may uh, request sourcing on several fields. Like for example, we want to sort by also uh, by name ascending and then by also descending. And of course, if uh, two books have same name and also, uh, whatever that means, uh, they will be sorted by ISBN by default. And there's also an alternative syntax for that. If you don't want to use these parentheses, you can just specify the order via pluses and minuses. So uh, in our opinion, this uh, API is uh, enough in most of the cases. And now just uh, let's take a look at how to implement uh, a handler for this API. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, uh, handler will uh, accept uh, some argument, which in uh, servant PC library is called sort and spec. So sort and specification, it's a description of, a, of what user asks us to do. And uh, this specification can be sort of a list of sorting items. So sort and spec is a list of items where uh, each item is just uh, a specification. So I want to sort this field in this order. So like name ascending or also descending and so on. Uh, and uh, at the end of this list will be uh, the default sorting which is specified uh, in the API. 
And what you can do with this specification, well, you can perform manual sorting, you can translate this specification to SQL, or basically do whatever you want with it. Uh, for example, if you are generating data and not getting it from some database, you can use it for generation. So, uh, yeah, so this is animation flavor. And, uh, well, uh, in our guess, like most uh, cases would be uh, connected with SQL. So, we've built an integration with PostgreSQL uh, database via uh, the popular Beam library, which is a library uh, to uh, produce uh, SQL code from, from Haskell. Uh, and uh, on this slide, I have a simple example of a Beam query uh, without any sorting involved yet. So here I only using Beam Kubernetes like all to get uh, to select all entries from our database and uh, run select to actually run the query and get all uh, books that are present in the database. Basically, this Beam uh, code will generate a query like that. So select everything, select everything from the books table. Okay, but how do we integrate our sorting in uh, this code? That's where our servant util Beam library comes in. Uh, you import a, a few uh, functions from it, and uh, well, you have uh, this function called sort by which is a function to generate correct SQL based on your sorting spec. So uh, I'm using this uh, sort by function uh, to uh, providing it these two arguments, uh, sorting spec, which I, which I got from my user and something called sorting app, sorting application. So how to apply sorting. Remember uh, in our type level description of the API, we had, uh, we've had uh, a list of field names on which the user can sort on. But these fields do not have to correspond to fields in the database. So for example, uh, you may perform some uh, complex translation from what fields the user specifies and what fields are actually available in the database. And, that, and that's what sort up is about. Uh, here you just uh, have to specify which field name from uh, API specification corresponds to which field from the database. Uh, so uh, it's basically this sorting spec up type. Uh, and it's also parameterized with type level list of fields. And this is needed to, uh, uh, to make the strong connection between what user specifies and what our application supports. So for example, uh, GHC can check that the field name which we specify in the API is actually uh, the same field which uh, gets specified in sorting application. So <clears throat> uh, again, this sorting application can be sort of a mapping from field names in the get parameters to whatever fields in the database you want to sort on. So you can even try to sort on some complex expressions. So for example, one field from, from the API will correspond to a combination of several fields in your database and this is perfectly supported. And uh, this uh, beam code will uh, generate uh, the following uh, SQL code. For example, if the user asked, asked us to sort by name ascending and also ascending, the descending, uh, beam library will generate the following SQL and so on. So uh, here is a quick recap of the, what we have seen so far uh, on sorting in servant utils. Uh, servant util uh, defies query format for get parameters. Uh, this format is gets parsed into a sorting specification, uh, which is passed to your handlers. Your handlers may use this specification directly or translate it to SQL or whatever. And we also provide <coughs> Servant util beam package uh, with integration with well uh, beam SQL uh, library, and uh, if you do not want to use beam, or if you don't want to use SQL at all, you can also <clears throat> uh, you can always make your own backend for our combinators to uh, provide this uh, implementation for your database backend. So uh, uh, let's move on to filtering. Uh, if, uh, uh, well, sourcing data is most often not enough for uh, UI in question. 
and we also have to support filtering. And uh, we may want to be able to like filter by exact ISBN number, or maybe filter by a range of years, or maybe filter by same name, substring, or even by patterns if we uh, want to use like some bigger expressions or something like that. And uh, to support this uh, in our servant to library, we have uh, a combinator called filtering params, which uh, similarly to what we have seen for searching, accepts a type list, uh, uh, type level list of uh, field names and uh, their corresponding types uh, for generation of the query. And a uh, major difference here is that our type like ISBN or text is prefixed with this auto filter uh, type family because uh, we want to restrict which filtering can apply to a given field. So uh, what is this thing? Well, it uses a type family called supported filters where we can specify which, uh, like which filters are supported for a given type. For example, I can say that uh, I want my ISBN fields to support filter by exact match or a comparison or maybe I can omit comparison and uh, support filters only by exact matches and so on. Uh, here is an example of supported filters in our library. Uh, for example, you can uh, do filtering by exact matches. That's called filter matching. So uh, each field gets uh, its corresponding gets parameter where you can specify the exact value to match on or uh, by using the neck, not equal operator, you can specify what to exclude, or you can also use in to filter by a range of uh, given values. For numerical fields, we support field comparing. Uh, for example, you can filter box which are uh, newer than uh, 1990, or books which were uh, written between 1994 and uh, 2007. And, uh, uh, and so on. This filter is uh, <clears throat> uh, supported by any Haskell type which has ORT instance, of course. Um, also, you can use filters with uh, patterns or uh, simple uh, like SQL patterns where we can have stars and uh, dots, if I'm not mistaken. And also, uh, you can just uh, look by a substring, not, not, not a pattern by just a simple substring of some field. And of course, uh, these three cases do not cover uh, anything there is in the world, in the world. So uh, there also is a way to filter manually by uh, your customly provided filtering function. Uh, likewise, we have integration with this BIM package. Uh, we provide a combinator called matches. Uh, which is compatible with uh, Beam's standard combinator guard. And uh, here we uh, provide matches with a filtering spec, which we get from user. So everything is similar to the sorting example. And also we have to uh, make a filtering app. So uh, a uh, description of how to apply our filter to the concrete data type, uh, which is stored in the database. So, uh, yeah, this is filtering up. Let's uh, not uh, spend quite a lot of time on uh, this pretty similar example and let's, let's move on to pagination. So uh, the last important part of bulk rows, like rows responding with lists of things is pagination. And for pagination, we provide a simple combinator called pagination params, uh, which uh, has a single, a single setting called default page size, where you can where you specify what, what page size will be if it's not set by your user. So for this example, I will say that my road responses with response with uh, 20 items by default. Uh, my handler will get this pagination spec with uh, just uh, a, with, which has just two uh, fields like offset and limit. So uh, this is a well-known offset limit pagination. It has some drawbacks, but uh, in, well, probably quite a large amount of cases and it can be used uh, safely. And uh, so our uh, first approach was to provide uh, just offset limit pagination. And of course, uh, as corresponding API, we'll j just get to uh, get parameters called offset and limit. 
uh, and uh, we are near the end of my talk. Uh, I will just show uh, how the generated client looks like. So for example, if you are uh, uh, writing a client that will qu query this uh, books API, uh, you use standard servant client function called client, which given uh, at, at a type level description of your API uh, provides you uh, with a function to query it uh, in some monad client M, uh, which is a standard servant client stuff. So uh, in this example, uh, it will generate you a function which accepts a certain spec and returns a list of books. And a certain spec can be built with a combinator called MK certain spec from our library. And uh, this spec is built uh, like this uh, with a list of uh, specifications where you use ask or desk combinators uh, together with names of fields. And here uh, names of fields are written by uh, the overloaded labels notation. So uh, with this hash sign, uh, this means that uh, this uh, list, uh, these names are uh, somehow on the type level and our library can check that you are using uh, only those names which uh, the API actually accepts. Also, uh, there's a generation of uh, uh, specification for API. Currently, it's Open API 2, aka Swagger, but uh, the work on adding Open API 3 support is in progress. So, uh, for example, for, for, for our road with books, if we add all three combinators pagination, filtering, and sourcing, we will get this nice description of our API where we can see uh, like off centered limit parameters. Uh, a full description of how uh, filtering works and also a full description of how sorting works. So uh, you don't have to write any uh, extra code for that. You just specify our combinator and uh, your fellow front-end developer will get all the information they need from the Swagger specification or open API specification. Well, uh, let's quickly recap what we have seen in this talk. Uh, servant util provides uh, sorting, filtering, and pagination combinators. That's uh, not everything there uh, that is in the library. So uh, uh, I uh, encourage you to look uh, in the readmes and see what also we have in there. Uh, we have integration with PostgreSQL via Beam package out of the box in the corresponding package servant util Beam. Uh, our library is fully extensible with type classes. So basically everything we have seen so far in uh, this presentation uh, is a member of some type class. So you can provide new backends for filtering and sorting. You can provide new filters and all you have to do is to write a couple of instances and it will play nicely together with the rest of this library. Uh, servant client is supported. Uh, Swagger you know, OpenAPI 2 specification is generated. And uh, we also provide a dummy backend for prototyping without uh, using a database. So if you want to quickly uh, put together some API and see how it plays out, you don't have to use servant util beam. You just can go to um, this simple dummy backend, which is included in the servant util package itself, and I just play with it. So uh, thank you for listening. Uh, here's my some some of my social links, and uh, I will be uh, happy to answer some questions if uh, my colleagues did not answer everything. I will quickly look in the chat. Uh, uh, this is for previous talk, I believe. Aha, uh -huh. so uh, are, are, are other DB libraries besides BIM supported? If not, is it easy to add our own? Uh, well, uh, currently we only support uh, BIM, uh, which uh, is used in, uh, I believe, uh, every SQL project that uh, talks to a Postgres. Uh, it's our SQL library of choice. Uh, but uh, of course, Servant Util does not depend on build uh, on BIM. It's in separate package and uh, you, if you want to use some other library, if so, if you want to use OpenAI, Persistent, or maybe even MongoDB, you don't have to use SQL. Uh, it's quite easy to add your own uh, support because we have a type class uh, for uh, 
sorting and filtering backends, uh, and you only write one instance uh, to translate your uh, query to some query language. Well, and uh, it will also play uh, nicely together. And uh, I believe there should be uh, there should have been a project announced announced for Suri Hack where you can uh, try to hack with uh, servant util with us, and uh, we will. Uh, provide you with uh, guidance for uh, uh, if, uh, if you get stuck. So uh, moving on to the next question uh, about GraphQL. Yeah, I was expecting this one. So GraphQL comes up a lot, but uh, yeah, we could have just used GraphQL and get uh, query language for filtering, sorting, pagination, and all stuff uh, for free. But uh, GraphQL is not. Uh, an extension of REST API. It's a completely different world. So uh, it, it would be a great commitment to switch to GraphQL because, well, it's completely different from uh, what uh, we have been doing in uh, REST development. So there is a bit of Haskell libraries for GraphQL, I believe, Mu Haskell and uh, Hasura, maybe some more I, I'm not aware of, but I do not know if they are mature enough. Um, and, well, Long story short, switching to GraphQL is a decision you should have, uh, you should make uh, in your team as as a whole. So it should be supported by your front end, should be supported by your back end, should be supported by your database. So uh, I believe only recently Postgres started doing some GraphQL natively. So um, for those who can't afford switching to GraphQL at the moment, uh, but still want to get get some well defined stuff. Uh, for this task, we are providing this library to achieve uh, some of uh, the goals with, uh, with REST API. Uh, so, uh, uh, what is the right package for you uh, to use for generating documentation? Uh, yeah, uh, Servant Open API 3 is available since uh, uh, the fall of 2020. Uh, it has the same API as Servant Swagger. So, uh, well, mostly it's just a drop-in replacement. You just have to rename some uh, imports. And uh, if uh, you are using Servant Swagger, I encourage you to try Servant Open API 3 uh, because, well, the Open API 3 spec itself, for example, is uh, more mature than Swagger 2. It, uh, uh, does not have uh, such irregularities or Oddities as Swagger 2 had. And for example, uh, in uh, OpenAPI 3, you are able to describe one off types. So actually, OpenAPI started supporting sums. And uh, it's, uh, uh, well, it's a big step forward from what Swagger 2 did because you couldn't uh, possibly uh, describe a type which has some cases in Swagger 2. Yeah, so uh, I don't see any other questions. Uh, that, uh, I will stop sharing my screen and uh, thank you, thank everyone for listening.